Anyway, time went by, and I mentioned a while ago that a very big event happened to me at the age of 11, D-Day, June 6, 1944. That's when the Americans landed in Normandy, and that was a big event. It happened on my birthday. Another very traumatic event happened on my 14th birthday, and that was with the with my menstruation. I had no idea at that age what it was, what it meant. She never told me about it. And it was June 5th, the day before my birthday, that my whole class went on a three-day trip to south of Belgium to a it was a cavern with ice, ice, I can't even say the word, but it was an excursion trip of three days. And we slept overnight in a big dormitory. Uh, I forgot the name of that town where we were, but anyway, it was, it was three days, June 5th, 6th, and 7th. And we visited that whole town and the caverns and icicles coming down from the ceilings and all that. And then we all went to sleep in that big dormitory. And on June 6th, on my 14th birthday, I wake up in the morning, and uh, to my horror, I my bed is full of blood. I think I'm dying. I see that I'm actually dying since there's blood all over. I don't know what's happening. The sheets, my pajamas, everything was bloody. And I remember looking and starting to scream as if somebody had shot me, killed me. I woke everybody up, and all the young girls came running to me, including the teacher in charge. And they, they realized what was happening, that it was just my my very first time that I menstruated and they realized by my screaming and yelling and being so hysterical about it that I knew nothing about it. It took them so long to convince me that it was normal, that I wasn't dying, that I wasn't hemorrhaging, that this is part of growing up and that now I'm a woman and you know this is part of it all. And eventually, I guess I calmed down, and they helped me, give me clean clothes, and they they folded all the bloody mess, the sheets, the pajamas, and they, of course, called my mother to come and get me because I was in a state of shock. Uh, as well as it was explained to me, I couldn't grasp it. I, I, I just had no idea. That's how innocent and naive I was. No one, nobody ever told me that a young girl at a certain age one day will menstruate and she then is able to have children. She then, well, what can I say? It, it, it was a very traumatic experience. An experience I shall never forget. And... Uh, Within a couple of hours, my mother and Maurice arrived to get me, and their reaction was so absurd, so stupid. More so my mother than Maurice, since he was an intelligent, educated man, but she was so stupid and ignorant. The first thing she says to me is, oh, as soon as we get home, we must celebrate and have a glass of wine, because you're a woman now, and she's happy, and she's saying it's wonderful, and this and that. And I'm looking at her like she's completely out of her head. What is there to celebrate? I mean, what the hell is she talking about? I'm crying. I'm still upset. I'm still shook up from all this. And all she's saying is, isn't it wonderful? You're a woman, a uh, mazel tov, a whole big uh, deal. Well, anyway, we finally do go back to Brussels' home. And sure enough, she takes our glasses, pours wine in, and makes a toast, and, I mean, 
It was a comedy. It, w it was a tragedy, but a, a comic tragedy. She's laughing and happy and this and that, and I'm just looking. I don't know what else is going on. And Maurice, again, is the one who's explaining to me, while we're all holding that stupid glass of wine, he's explaining to me that what it is all about. And he's saying that he assumed that I knew and that he's sorry for what happened to me, how I reacted. And he wished to God, had he known that I didn't know, he would have told my mother to tell me. But being what he was, he, he, he really saw that I knew. Oh, God, what a period. First of all, <laughs> I, of course I continued bleeding, needless to say, and she told me how to take care of myself and all, but it was such a traumatic miserable experience another one as if I didn't have enough in my life until the age of 14 I had to have that on top of it okay that was over already with and I got over it I understood funny but <laughs> it's funny I'm not 41 and it's probably all psychosomatic but every month when I get my period I know it's all in my mind, but I go through hell each time. It, it's not exactly hell, but even when I know there's no pain, no cramps, no defeat, I always say, oh, it's bad, it's bad. The first two, three days are bad, and I'm sure it's really not so bad. It's just that I'm overreacting to it, and I'll, I, I, I just can never forget that. It's left a big... Um, what's the word? It's left a big mark on me. And the situation is still the same, except for one thing. At the age of 14, my father, after leaving it up with all the his girlfriends, women, whatever, he decided that he wants to go to the United States and where they, he might have a better future. And so, around that same period, he, he decided to emigrate to America. Now, right now, where I'm now, I'm not sure whether he asked me to go with him or not, or whether he showed a desire for me to go with him or not, or whether he never did ask or not. But this I will find out pretty soon. Next month is Father's Day, June 15, 1975. And I invited him to the house, and I expect, I mean, I, I tend to ask him a lot of questions that are still vague, that I'm not, I just don't remember. The main point is that that's the year he left for America, and I was left with Maurice, my mother, and the uh, kid, Willie. And uh, in my very childish, naive way, I would always respond to him. He would hold my hand, I would squeeze his, without, without, just to return his, his affection, without any seducing on my part it's just that it was just so good to be that he held my hand or when we walked in the street the three of us he put he would hold my mother on one side hold me the other at all times I felt he treated me like an equal like a, like a human being like a person with feelings so of course I responded to all that I liked him so much I admired him also tremendously I admired his intellect his education his paintings the way he painted so well I admired his playing the violin so beautiful I admired the fact that he was so well read 
He was so the exact opposite of my mother that to this day I don't understand what attracted them to each other. I suppose it was physical attraction, sexual attraction. I can't, for me, in a million years, understand what else there could have been because they were so not compatible intellectually. I mean, my mother never read a book in her life. She had never gone to a museum in her life. She had never gone to a concert in her life. My mother was always a very shrewd, intelligent woman, businesswoman, who had, who was his exact opposite. So as I was growing, in the sense of growing intellectually, more and more did I realize the contrast between the two, and I could not understand it, and I just could not understand what they had, except it must have been sex. I mean, what else? And maybe one complimented another, because... Maurice was a dreamer. Now, I mentioned at the beginning that he did have a glove factory. Now, it wasn't his glove factory, actually. His father gave it to him. You know, his father originally had it. And then his father died many years before, so Maurice continued the business, but it failed. And uh, if not for my mother building him up again business-wise, pushing in this direction, that direction. He uh, he was a real bohemian. I mean, uh, so he read, he played music, he painted, but he did not to make a living at all. I mean, she was the one who who was the businesswoman in, in every sense of the word. Without her encouraging new enterprises or new ways of making money, I mean, he would have failed completely, so he depended on her as far as the business end, and she depended on him, I guess, sexually, she was very attracted to him, and again, he was not an attractive man at all, but he had a charm about him that, (laughs) it's very hard to describe. He was short, he had no hair, but he had such a char- he was such a charmer. He knew how to speak. He could I, I, I God if only I could find the right words. He could charm a snake, if that's the best description description I could give. And he was such a good talker. He'd open his mouth and people would listen. Oh, also one other thing. He used to write beautiful uh, poems, verses. It didn't matter, short stories. He was a genius, an intellect, no sense of business whatsoever. And the two opposites... The two of them were so opposite. It's completely beyond me how these two found one another. Well, so let's see now. I'm about 14 and a half by then. And for six months I had that, my, I was menstruating. And I finally could accept that could accept it. <laughs> I had no choice. But supposedly I'm a woman. And a woman at 14 and a half who was so childish. I was really a little girl who all she wanted, all she wanted. I am appreciating it now. I can understand it now. was just love and attention. And the only single person who at that time gave it to me was Moise. So, I mentioned that, 
Oh, even though I caught up with my school years, with my schoolmates, I still needed more help constantly. It isn't that I was uh, stupid and couldn't grasp things too well, but when it came to math, I, I had such a block that every day I needed his help. And, of course, every day he'd come to my room and uh, he would help me and explain to me and teach me and coach me and tutor me. And we did spend a hell of a lot of time together. 